The next region we are going to talk about is the spinal region. And so we're coming um, back towards the central area from the peripheral region where we just were last chapter. Um, so the first part of this lecture, um, we're just going to talk about the anatomy and function of the spinal cord. Um, so I want you to be able to identify um, some of the spinal region structures and what they contain. So the dorsal root, which we've talked about, um, the dorsal root ganglion, which is where the bodies of the somatosensory neurons live, um, the ventral root, and then spinal nerves um, all together. So we'll talk about them. So the spinal region includes all the neural structures contained within the vertebrae. So the spinal cord lies within the vertebral column extending from C1 to L2. Um, so the, um, and then branching off of the spinal cord, you have the dorsal and ventral roots, which merge to form the spinal nerves. And then we also have the meninges, which are continuous from the meninges of the brain, and they protect the spinal cord. Um, the ventral root is composed of motor axons. The dorsal root is composed of sensory fibers. And it um, unites with the ventral root at the um, intervertebral foramen to form the spinal nerve. Um, there are 31 pairs of um, spinal nerves that arise from the spinal cord from two spinal nerve roots. Each spinal nerve carries motor, sensory, and um, autonomic fibers from a single spinal segment. Um, spinal segment is the part of the spinal cord that gives rise to each pair of spinal nerves. So it's done in a segmental fashion. So the spinal nerves carry all the motor and sensory axons for a single spinal segment. In the cervical region, the spinal nerves um, emerge above the corresponding vertebra, except the eighth spinal nerve, because you know we don't have an eighth cervical vertebra. So there are eight cervical nerves, and they emerge above. So the C1 spinal nerve emerges above C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. And then beneath C7, there is the C8 spinal nerve. Um, and then after that, so that shifts everything down one, so the, in the remainder of the spinal curve, cord, the nerves um, emerge below the corresponding vertebra. So T1 nerve is below T1. T2 nerve is below T1. T2. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, this diagram has the, um, the spinal cord on one side and then within the spinal column on the other side. So you can see um, where the different uh, regions of the um, spinal cord are. Um, so each region of the spinal cord is connected to a specific region of the body by axons traveling through that pair of spinal nerves. And the segments are um, identified by their corresponding spinal nerves. So um, hopefully that makes sense. And the dorsal root ganglion contains the somas of the sensory neurons. So segmental organization is a significant feature of the spinal cord. Um, each segment connects to a specific region of the body. Um, connections of the nerve rootlets to the exterior of the cord indicate the segments. So where it connects indicates which segment it's in. The ventral root is composed of motor axons. Um, the dorsal root is composed of sensory fibers and unites with the ventral root at the intervertebral foramen to form the spinal nerve. So the internal structure of the spinal cord is um, pretty interesting, um, the way it's laid out. So that sort of the H-shaped or butterfly-shaped, however you want to say it, um, gray area in the spinal cord can so gray area consists of cell bodies white area is axons and so the white area in the spinal cord is the spinal tracts that we've talked about so the the dorsal column medial lemniscus and the um, lateral corticospinal tract and the um 
the uh, spinothalamic tracts and the spinocerebellar tracts, all those ones that we've talked about. So in this diagram from the book, um, the sensory tracts are all shown on the right. The motor tracts are shown on the left. However, both are on, you have two sides of each. It's just um, separated in this diagram for clarity. Um, so the, the different um, areas of the gray matter of the spinal cord um, are um, separated into horns. So dorsal horn, lateral horn, and ventral horn. So the dorsal horn is the posterior section of gray matter within the spinal cord that processes sensory information. Um, the lateral um, section of gray matter is called the lateral horn. It, depending on which level you are, it doesn't always show up as a horn. So on some levels, it act it really is very pointy and show and does show up like a horn. On um, other levels, the lateral horn is um, not as pointy looking, if, if that makes any sense. So lateral horn um, processes autonomic information. The ventral horn is the anterior section of gray matter that processes motor information. And the cell bodies of the lower motor neurons are contained in the ventral horn. Makes sense. That's where um, motor information is processed. So interneurons that either process information locally or convey information short distances within the nervous system um, include cells that stay completely in the gray matter as well as cells whose axons travel in the white matter to different levels of the spinal cord. So um, all the cell bodies uh, in the spinal region are included in that um, central, that internal um, butterfly or H in the cross section of the spinal cord. And then all of the um, tracts that we've talked about, they're all listed right here. So they're all the, it shows the motor tracks on the, on the left and the um, sensory tracks on the right, but they are on both sides. Um, and you can see how they, those run in distinct tracks within the spinal cord. So this is the, um, the gray matter that's mostly composed of spinal interneurons, which is pretty cool. All the different little um, nuclei or um, a nucleus in the nervous system is always a gathering of cell bodies that performs a common function. Um, they're all named. I don't expect you to know where each little nucleus is. Just know that um, there's a lot of processing going on in the spinal cord. So the meninges, um, just like in the brain, they're the layers of connective tissue that surround the spinal cord. And the spinal cord meninges are continuous with the meninges surrounding the brain. So same three layers, pia mater closely adheres to the spinal cord surface. The arachnoid is separated um, from the pia by cerebral spinal fluid in the subarachnoid space. And the dura mater is the tough outer layer. So same layers, and we'll talk about these again um, when we're talking about the um, cerebral region. The, of course, there's a good blood supply to the spinal cord because you need to supply all those cells. The blood supply to the cord is um, supplied by three spinal arteries running vertically along the cord, one in the anterior midline and two posterior on either side of the midline but medial to the dorsal roots. So good blood supply because we need those nutrients. So the spinal cord needs to be able to move within the vertebral column. Um, so when we, there's, we create neural tension when um, we flex the vertebral column, it stretches the spinal cord and spinal nerves. So hip flexion produces anterior movement of the cauda equina and stretches the lumbosacral roots. Um, physiological motions do not significantly change the vertebral canal space in people with normal vertebral canals. Um, if you have stenosis or narrowing of the canal, um, there uh, might be a little bit of a change in the canal space with physiological motions. Um, extending or lateral bending of the, of the neck increases the um, intervertebral frame and pressure at all cervical le levels. So extension and lateral bending of the neck um, definitely changes the space that's available in the cervical spinal cord. 
Um, neck extension increases cervical nerve, nerve root signs and symptoms when people are having those signs and symptoms. Nerve roots and spinal nerves are protected from excessive mechanical loads because they only occupy 23 to 50 percent of the available space within the intervertebral foramina. That way they have room to move. The only time when it becomes a problem is when you get narrowing or stenosis of those foramina and then that's when people start to have problems. Um, the, the nerve roots and spinal nerves are also cushioned by fat. Fat is your friend. You don't want to get rid of all of it. So eat that cookie right now. Just kidding. Um, dural sleeves surround the nerve roots within the intervertebral foramen. Lots of protection mechanisms in place. Um, the ligaments that may, there are ligaments that maintain the spinal nerve within the intervertebral space and relieve traction on spinal nerves. So lots of protective uh, mechanisms in place in the spinal cord. The, the spinal cord, um, the segments of the spinal cord um, exchange information with other spinal cord segments with peripheral nerves and with the brain. So information con um, conveyed by a motor tract to a motor neuron is only one of the many influences on that motor neuron. So the spinal um, segments and other um, other segments within the spinal cord are also influencing that motor neuron. 